This is the 13th lecture of the course and the second lecture on carrier transport. In the last class, we have seen the various uh, modes in which carriers can move in a semiconductor and then uh, we said that we will consider in detail the semi-classical transport. For the semi-classical transport, we showed the following. If you take a plane in a semiconductor, and observe the flux that is crossing this particular plane from left to right and right to left. Then the picture would be something as follows. Under equilibrium conditions, the two fluxes are equal. The magnitude is given by P into V by 2, where P is the concentration of carriers. We are considering holes here and V is the velocity of carriers. So that is the magnitude of the flux, individual fluxes, but they are equal in magnitude, so they cancel each other. And this flux a uh, particular equation for the flux can be obtained by considering a region of width equal to the mean free path okay, on either side of this plane. When you disturb this equilibrium, when this is not equal to this, okay, then there is a difference, net flux, a transport results. Now this difference can be because of either P1 not being equal to P2, that is the whole concentration in this region not being equal to the concentration in this region or it could be because the velocity of carriers which are crossing from left to right not being equal to velocity of carriers going from right to left that is V1 not equal to V2. V1 not equal to V2 can be either because of temperature difference between the two regions or because of an application of electric field. So these are the various ways in which the transport can take place. Now let us proceed further from here and try to explain this particular curve. So what we will try to do is to show that for small electric field, you have a linear dependence between the velocity acquired by the carrier in response to electric field, whereas for large electric fields, the velocity is constant. In other words, if we were to translate into this particular model, then we will have to show that the flux increases linearly, this net flux okay, increases linearly with either uh, with the electric field in the case of drift transport. That is when V1 is not equal to V2, the velocities of the carriers which are crossing the plane are not equal because of electric field that is the drift condition. Under that condition, the flux will be proportional to the electric field for small electric field whereas for large electric field, the flux will saturate. That is what we have to show. The fact that flux will saturate for large electric field can be seen very easily from here. Notice that because of the application of electric field, supposing the electric field is in this direction. This electric field aids the carriers moving in this direction and therefore the V1 is increasing okay, or this particular flux is increasing. Okay. Whereas the same E opposes the carriers moving in this direction and therefore this flux reduces or V2 reduces. Now V2 can at most be reduced to 0 or this flux can at most be reduced to 0 you cannot do anything more than that and that is the reason why when the electric field is large, 
and you reduce this particular flux to 0 thereafter there cannot be any change in the net flux even when you increase the electric field. Then the question arises that if the flux is not increasing when you apply the electric field uh, when you increase the electric field for large electric fields then what is happening to the extra energy that you are putting in as you increase the electric field. The point to note is that this flux that we are writing here is the directed component okay it is not the random component. So, it is only the directed component whereas the net picture the total picture of the carrier is that it consists of a random component and a directed component. So, what happens when the electric field is large is that on increase of the electric field whatever extra energy you are putting in that energy is going to increase the random component of the carrier motion and not the directed component. So, directed component is saturating the random component is increasing okay that is what is happening whereas for small electric fields what is happening is that the directed component is increasing linearly with the electric field whereas the random component is not changing significantly that is the picture. So, let us show the picture for small electric fields how is it that for small electric fields the flux will increase linearly with electric field for the drift component and similarly for the diffusion component the flux will increase linearly with gradient of the concentration. So, this particular topic is called quasi equilibrium transport. That is look at the slide when the electric field is small the disturbance from equilibrium is small and this condition therefore, for small electric fields is referred to as quasi equilibrium that is small disturbance from equilibrium. So, let us write down what are the implications of the small disturbance from equilibrium. So, quasi equilibrium means 1. So, this quasi equilibrium implies the net flux magnitude which is you note here the difference of these two fluxes. Okay. So, the net flux magnitude is much less than the individual components this and that. So, the difference between the two quantities which are under imbalance is much less than the individual quantities. Okay. So, it is something like saying this quantity is let us say 1000 units this quantity is 995 units. Okay. This is 1000 this is 995 the difference is 5. So, 5 is much less than 995 or 1000. Okay. So, that is the real meaning of quasi equilibrium small disturbance from equilibrium. Its second implication of this condition is that the important parameters associated with random motion that is the mean time between collisions the mean free path and the RMS velocity okay, which is actually the thermal velocity under equilibrium these quantities are not significantly affected as compared to the equilibrium condition. So, these quantities are almost the same. as in equilibrium. Okay. So, under these conditions now we need to show that the net flux okay, this particular flux will be linearly related to the driving force. Let us do this for the case of drift. So, let us come back to this diagram we need to find out what will be this velocity v 1 and the velocity v 2 when you apply an electric field. To calculate the velocity v 1 you can proceed as follows. 
supposing you had a carrier here okay which has just encountered a collision after the collision because of the electric field it is moving in this direction then if it is right next to this plane when it is crossing the plane its velocity will be equal to the thermal velocity because it would not be able to gain any velocity from the electric field unless it moves some distance only when it is moving some distance then during the motion it is gaining velocity from the electric field at the end of the collision unless it travels some distance it experiences the field for some amount of time the velocity will not change so the velocity of this carrier when it is moving to the right is equal to the thermal velocity that is this but look at a carrier here if after collision it has started moving in this direction then the next collision it will encounter only after traveling a distance lc that is just after crossing the plane now this carrier when it moves through a distance lc will gain a velocity in the direction of the electric field so let us calculate what is that velocity then after we calculate that velocity we can take an average velocity for the carriers here which are moving in this direction to be the velocity of the carrier this particular carrier while crossing this plane plus the velocity of this particular carrier crossing this plane divided by 2 that we can take as the average because some carrier let us say which is here it will travel a distance less than lc and obviously it will gain a velocity which is less than the velocity gained by this carrier while crossing this plane but that velocity will be more than the velocity of this carrier while crossing this plane so you have different carriers at different distances from this plane gaining different amounts of velocities so strictly speaking the average should be calculated by integration but we will simplify the mathematics and we will simply say the average velocity of carriers in this plane is the velocity that is gained by this carrier while crossing the plane and the velocity th gained by this particular carrier while crossing this plane average of the two so what is that the velocity gained by the carrier is when it travels a distance lc can be written as v is equal to square root of the thermal velocity square plus 2 times a times lc where a is the acceleration because of the electric field lc is the distance traveled in the electric field so this particular expression applies to this carrier here right when it is crossing the electric field it is traveling a distance lc now let us apply quasi equilibrium conditions to this particular equation what is the meaning of quasi equilibrium the disturbance is very very small please understand the disturbance is very very small so whatever we have listed here for quasi equilibrium that is a net flux is very much less than the individual fluxes which are in imbalance or these things are not affected this is equivalent to saying the following this is the contribution of the velocity due to electric field this is the velocity because of temperature random velocity so this directed component is going to be much less than the random component that is the meaning of quasi equilibrium so quasi equilibrium implies 2 times lc is much less than v thermal square so we can simplify the above as v we can write as v thermal into square root of 1 plus 2 a l c by v thermal square which can be approximated as v thermal into 1 plus 2 times a l c by v thermal square half of this okay the approximately equal to this while writing this equation we have used the approximation that square root of 1 plus x is approximately equal to 1 plus x by 2 for 
x much less than 1. So, we have used this particular mathematical approximation while writing this. Now, you can simplify this you can see that one V thermal will cancel here with this V thermal and then the L c by V thermal can be written as the tau c mean free time and these two will cancel with this. So, this quantity can be written as V thermal plus A tau c. Okay. So, this is a simplification of this particular equation. So, this is V. Now, we can put an arrow over this that is this is the V directed from left to right. Okay. So, now we said that the average velocity will be this velocity plus V thermal by 2. Come back to this particular diagram. Okay. What we have now estimated is the velocity of this particular carrier when crossing this plane. This velocity is V thermal for this carrier. So, we must take average of the two. So, that is what we are doing here and we can write V directed from left to right which is the same as in our nomenclature it is V 1 we can write as average of the two V thermal plus V thermal plus A times tau C by 2 which is equal to V thermal plus A tau C upon 2. So, this is the average velocity of carriers crossing the plane from left to right. So, this is the gain because of the electric field the directed motion. Now, we can write expression for V 2 from here. Okay. V 2 is equal to V thermal minus A tau C by 2 by similar analysis because V 2 there is a reduction in the velocity. You can look at this diagram. Okay. V 2 is the velocity of carriers crossing from right to left. So, this electric field is opposing these carriers. So, that is why the velocity gain is, is this. Okay, in the field or loss velocity lost is this. Now, we can use the formula that net flux from left to right is equal to T V 1 minus V 2 the magnitude of this upon 2. So, substituting for V 1 and V 2 from here you will get this is equal to P into V 1 minus V 2 is A tau C upon 2 because these two will get added up and then you divide by 2 you end up getting this particular equation P into A tau C by 2. Now, from here we can write the expression for the drift current. So, drift current the magnitude of the drift current is equal to Q times the net flux magnitude. J drift is equal to Q times F net that is equal to Q into P A tau C upon 2. Now, we must express this acceleration A in terms of the electric field to get a relation between the current due to the electric field. Now, the acceleration A we can write as the force on the particle that is Q times E divided by M P the mass of the particle effective mass. So, substituting that here you get this is equal to Q P into Q E 
by m p into tau c by 2, which can be rewritten in the form q into p into q tau c by 2 m p into e. So, q p into this constant into e that is the current. So, you see what you find is that a current has resulted which is proportional to the electric field. There is a current which is proportional to electric field okay? because this is a constant. This constant is called the mobility. Since we are talking of holes, this would be called the mobility of holes. If you were to derive a similar expression for electrons, it would be mu suffix n or the mobility of electrons. Now, in a similar way, we can derive an expression for the diffusion transport. For the diffusion transport, the expression is F net magnitude is equal to P1 minus P2 into V thermal upon 2 because in diffusion the whole, whole concentrations in this particular region, let us come back to this particular diagram. The whole concentration in this region P1 is different from the whole concentration in this region P2. And in fact, the picture is in such a when can this happen? This can happen in the following situation. You draw, let us say, the whole concentration is varying something like this this is x and this is in this direction it is p. So, there is a gradient of whole concentration. So, uh, on average the whole concentration here is more than the whole concentration here that is what it means and therefore, we need to find out what is the current. Now, how do you find out the current? We need to find out what is the average concentration of holes. You see the whole concentration is changing in this region, right. So, we need an average concentration. If you assume make an approximation that this within this region which is a small mean free path or mean free distance of collision. No, you will recall that this is of the order of 0.1 micrometer. So, this is a really small width. So, we can say even though the concentration will be varying with distance okay, in a nonlinear fashion maybe in general within this small distance we can assume a linear approximation of the concentration. We can assume that the concentration is changing linearly like this. If we do that, then it is very clear that the average of this concentration here would be exactly in the middle. The whole concentration corresponding to the middle of this region, that is the average concentration for this. Similarly, the average concentration here, so this is your P1 and this is your P2. and the distance between these two points is also L c okay? because this is half of L c, this is half of L c. So, this distance is L c. Okay? So, based on this picture now, we can write an expression for P 1 and P 2 in terms of the gradient. So, what can we write? We can write P 1 minus P 2 that is this concentration minus this concentration by that distance. Okay? So, that is this particular slope that is what we are talking about this slope P 1 minus P 2 upon L c this is L c the distance is equal to minus d P by d x. Notice that the gradient is negative. Okay? P 1 is more than P 2. So, P 1 minus P 2 is positive. Okay. So, but gradient dp by dx is negative. So, negative of this negative is this quantity 
in other words dp by dx is negative of this quantity okay in other words p1 minus p2 is equal to minus lc into dp upon dx now we can substitute this result okay as in this formula so we write p1 minus p2 is minus lc dp by dx into v thermal upon 2 that is a net and by rearranging this you get this is equal to minus lc v thermal upon 2 into dp by dx that is a net flux the current due to diffusion we can write d j diffusion which is directed from left to right the let us only talk about the magnitude we'll remove the arrows and only the magnitude j diffusion is equal to you multiply this by q as done before q times f net that is equal to minus q lc v thermal upon 2 into dp by dx in other words now you can see that the diffusion current is proportional to the gradient of the hole concentration this is a constant so this is a constant of proportionality this constant of proportionality is called the diffusion coefficient in this case we are talking of holes so you put a suffix p to show that this is dp so now you can see these two compare these two equations okay this equation is the equation for drift e is nothing but the gradient of the potential so i could write e as minus d psi by dx if you want and then you can see exactly one to one correspondence between these so let us write down these two equations again to see the exact one to one correspondence j drift is equal to q p mu p into e which is nothing but d psi by dx psi is a potential with a negative sign and j diffusion is equal to q dp into dp by dx okay so dp is the constant of proportionality for diffusion mu p is the constant of proportionality for drift now what these two formulas show please note that these are applicable under quasi equilibrium so what these two formulas show is under quasi equilibrium the current is proportional to the driving force both these cases and these are the constant of proportionality mu p is equal to q tau c upon 2 m p and d p is equal to l c v thermal upon 2. So, these are the constants are related to the basic parameters of the random thermal motion, thermal velocity, mean free distance and mean free time, this is effective mass. we can easily see from here why for example in the case of drift the velocity of carriers is proportional to the electric field how do you write the velocity of carriers you can write the drift current in terms of velocity of carriers right instead of this particular formula you can also write another way of writing the drift current is j drift is q into p into the drift velocity this is the basic definition of current okay because of any moment q times p into the velocity of the carrier which is the, called the drift velocity so from here you find that if you compare these two 
the drift velocity is given by according to this formula mu p into minus d psi by dx which is nothing but E. So, V d is mu p into E which means mu p is a constant of proportionality between V d and E. So, V d is linearly related to E right this is what we saw here in this slide. So, this is quasi equilibrium small electric field the velocity is rising linearly with respect to electric field. So, this is what we have been successful in showing okay, in an analytical manner we have got an equation we also have an equation for the constant of proportionality mu p how much is this. Now next we need to see the relation between these two okay. we can directly see now the relation between these two as follows if I take the ratio mu p say dp by mu p if I take the ratio dp by mu p this will be equal to lc v thermal upon these two and these two will cancel. So, here you will have q into tau c and m p going up. Now, L c by tau c is nothing but the thermal velocity okay. the mean free distance by mean free time is thermal velocity. So, this is m p v thermal square upon q. Now, what is m p v thermal square? You can easily identify that this term is related to the kinetic energy of the holes under equilibrium conditions because of random thermal motion. Okay. This is kinetic energy the half is not here we will shortly see what is the exact meaning of this m p v thermal square. You see we have considered a one dimensional situation here okay. this is an idealization in practice the picture is three dimensional. Now, if for a three dimensional picture it is shown that it has been shown that the kinetic energy of carriers undergoing random thermal motion is exactly identical to the kinetic energy of gas molecules okay, in gas under equilibrium at any temperature and that equation is 3 by 2 k t kinetic energy kinetic energy at any temperature under equilibrium is three by two k t because of random thermal motion this is for three dimensional situation. So, this is equal to half m p v thermal square if you take holes in crystal. So, from here we get m p v thermal square is equal to three times k t if you now consider one dimensional situation then your energy that you are writing here instead of 3 k t it will become 1 k t. So, this is for three dimensional situation okay. So, for 1 d you have m p v thermal square is equal to one third of this that is k t. So, what you have here the numerator is k times t. So, this is equal to k times t by q this is a very interesting relation that the diffusion coefficient by the mobility for any carrier here we have discussed ho considered holes, but you could as well consider electrons the, this ratio is k t by q which is nothing but the thermal voltage. So, you have a relation which is called the Einstein relation. and that is d p by mu p is equal to v that is voltage suffix small t. Please distinguish this capital V from small v. So, when you write v thermal this is a thermal velocity of carriers or more strictly speaking this is a thermal velocity thermal speed of the carriers because of random motion this is root mean square velocity under equilibrium at any temperature whereas 
capital V suffix small t is the thermal voltage okay capital V suffix small t the speed is small v suffix small t h. So, this is the very important relation that is Einstein relation. In fact, we can remove the suffix p because in general this is this holds for any carrier hole or electron. So, we will write d by mu is equal to v t. You can put a suffix p or n depending on whether it is electrons or holes. It is because of this particular relation that one talks of mobility okay, alone and considers variation of mobility with respect to different parameters and studies or characterizes the mobility. Because once you characterize the mobility which can be done very easily, the diffusion coefficient which is a somewhat more difficult constant to characterize than mobility can be readily obtained by this relation at any temperature. Okay. So, you need not consider diffusion coefficient and mobility characterization separately. You do mobility characterization and from there you can get the diffusion coefficient. Of course, we must remember strictly speaking this relation holds under quasi equilibrium conditions that is small disturbance under equilibrium because only under those conditions this formulae that we have derived are this formulae that we have derived are valid. Okay. What this Einstein relation shows okay, intuitively is that both drift and diffusion, drift and diffusion are based on random thermal motion. There is a common basis for both. That is why both are related in a very simple manner. Now, we will just briefly touch upon the thermoelectric current though we are not going to discuss it in detail because thermoelectric current is also based on the random thermal motion like drift and diffusion. So, what is the situation for thermoelectric current? I will just give the results without the derivation. So, just as for drift and diffusion you have the current proportional to the driving force that is gradient of the potential here, gradient of the concentration here. For thermoelectric current, I am writing it for holes because the other two also we were we had written for holes. One can always write similar equations for electrons. For holes thermoelectric current is given by minus q times p the hole concentration into a thermoelectric coefficient okay, same which this coefficient as you can see is d, but with a superscript t to show that this is not diffusion coefficient, but coefficient associated with thermoelectric current. This coefficient is uh, then multiplied by the gradient of the temperature d t by d x. Okay. So, that is you can see one to one correspondence between all these three equations. Now, like you have the Einstein relation d by mu is v t, the relation for thermoelectric electric coefficient is d by mu d superscript t by mu is small k by 2 q where k is the Boltzmann constant. So, if you multiply and divide by temperature you will get this relation thermal voltage by 2 times t. So, these two coefficients are also related. So, in this way you can see the mobility diffusion coefficient and thermoelectric coefficient are all these things are interrelated in a very simple way showing the common basis of random thermal motion underlying all these three transport phenomena. Okay. So, in fact it is because of this thermoelectric current that you get a voltage between any two points which are at different temperatures, okay, contact points which are at different temperatures. So, you will recall this particular diagram that we had drawn hot and cold and if it is a p type semiconductor then we said that if you connect an ammeter you will find a current in this direction. Okay. Now, how do you explain this current in this direction? It is very simple. So, because the temperature here is more than the temperature here, okay, the velocity of carriers here, the random velocity of carriers here in this region is more than the velocity here which means because of this difference the v1 minus v2 you know if you compare to uh, the earlier diagram here. So, if you think in terms of the diagram this is the velocity v1 and this is the velocity v2 we are assuming that this side is hotter than this side. So, v1 minus v2 right that is the net velocity. So, here v1 is the velocity of carriers directed from hot to cold 
and v2 is velocity cold to hot so hot to cold is more so there is a net velocity a net movement of holes in this direction inside the semiconductor because of thermoelectric current and when you close the circuit outside therefore you can see that the holes will move this way come out and again move so this is how the current is established okay when you put an ammeter so that is why the current is in this direction if you do not put an ammeter and leave this open circuited then it is very clear from here that what will happen is the holes will tend to accumulate at this point okay this point will become positively charged and this point will be negatively charged because this is losing holes and a field will be developed okay so a potential will be seen if you do not put an ammeter and put a voltmeter that is if you stop the current you will see a voltage in this direction okay now th that much discussion about thermoelectric current is sufficient if you want to calculate the thermoelectric current for small temperature gradients you can use this particular formula okay now detailed derivation of this formula and the unity underlying these three mechanisms of transport namely drift diffusion and thermoelectric current has been uh, discussed in a publication which is shown on this slide A simple unified elucidations of some semiconductor device phenomena published in IEEE transactions on education volume 42 on pages 323 to 327 in the November 1999 issue. So here a detailed derivation of all these three currents drift diffusion and thermoelectric current although they are detailed they are very simple derivations and the relation between them has been clearly shown. Now before we move on to discuss the mobility behavior with doping temperature and so on in detail as we have said recall that if you know mobility because of these relations here okay, of diffusion coefficient and the thermoelectric current to mobility you can also get the information about the other coefficients diffusion and thermoelectric coefficients. So that is why we need to discuss mobility in detail mobility alone in detail it can be characterized easily. So before we uh, get into this discussion let us understand clearly the fact that in response to electric field in drift transport you are getting a constant velocity and not an acceleration okay this point needs to be emphasized and similarly for diffusion transport also in response to a concentration gradient you are getting a constant velocity of the carriers okay that is the velocity is not changing with time. Now in the case of uh, drift motion right this can be some somewhat perplexing though we have made a derivation still a doubt can remain but how are you getting okay, a velocity that is constant with time in response to an electric field because if one were to take the movement of electrons in vacuum you take a movement of electron whatever we say for electron we can say for holes since we are considering vacuum we consider electrons because you know holes cannot exist in vacuum okay that is why we are considering electrons. So take an electron in vacuum if you apply an electric field E it will move in this direction okay and it will acquire a constant acceleration it does not require a constant velocity it acquires a constant acceleration which means its velocity will go on increasing with time. In contrast to this in a semiconductor crystal what is happening is that when you apply the same electric field in semiconductor when you apply the same electric field in this direction here also the electron moves but here it is a results in a drift velocity a constant velocity of carriers rather than acceleration which means the carrier is not the velocity is not changing with time. So here it is an acceleration A equal to Q E upon M mass of the electron this is in vacuum so M naught this is the magnitude of the acceleration okay, for the electron here it is a uniform velocity how is this possible. So please note the difference in the two cases in the semiconductor you are having other particles surrounding the electron 
okay, and the electron is being scattered. That is why it is undergoing random thermal motion. Here, there is no such random thermal motion. So, it is because of this random motion that the electron is not able to continuously accelerate. Because of these other particles present around the electron, the electron is in encountering friction during its movement. And because of the friction or opposition from the other particles, it can only acquire a constant velocity and its velocity cannot increase with time. So, the analogy for this is as follows. If you have, let us say, a jar of fluid, you would have done this experiment in your physics class and this is the fluid and if you drop a ball, steel ball in this, you know that after travelling some distance, the steel ball acquires a uniform terminal velocity. So, because of gravity, it does not go on accelerating if it is in a medium, viscous medium which opposes the motion of the ball, okay, which is causing friction. If the same ball is outside, it there is an acceleration E equal to G, A equal to G, it is accelerating continuously. Whereas, if the same ball falls in a viscous medium, then it acquires a uniform terminal velocity. Okay. Same is the situation for the electrons. Within a crystal, it acquires a uniform drift velocity in response to electric field. field. So, this should not be difficult to appreciate. Now, we will move on to discussing what are the various uh, scattering, uh, how the various scattering phenomena affect the mobility and how the mobility varies with doping and temperature. In other words, we want to discuss these graphs. So, mobility variation with total impurity concentration shown here, decrease in mobility and mobility variation with temperature as well as doping as shown in this particular slide. Okay? So, they are the graphs for which we want to give a qualitative explanation theory and some kind of expressions. Now, we can derive this information from the formula for mobility. Let us write the formula for mobility is Q tau c by 2 m, where suffix for m can be either n or p. Okay? It can be either electrons or holes. It does not matter what it is. This is a general expression for mobility. So, if you want to know how mobility is affected by doping and temperature, essentially it boils down to finding out how this particular term that is the mean free time between collisions is affected by doping and temperature. So, effect of doping and temperature on tau c. Okay? That is what we want to see. In other words, what we want to see is how the number of scattering events okay, in a unit time are affected when you change doping and temperature. Okay? Now, for this purpose, uh, we need to appreciate the fact that when you change the temperature, okay, you are changing the phonon concentration and if the temperature is very high, you can also change the minority carrier concentration. Okay? So, temperature can affect the carrier concentration and it can affect also the phonon concentration. On the other hand, the doping does not affect the phonon concentration so long as the doping is moderate since the crystal structure is not affected. So, doping only affects the carrier concentration. So, what are the scattering phenomena we need to discuss? The scattering phenomena as we know are ionized impurity scattering. then the phonon or lattice scattering and then carrier carrier scattering because apart from the carrier which is moving okay you have other particles namely ionized impurities phonons or vibrating lattice and other carriers so the carrier collides with these three so let us take up these phenomena one at a time. So, other words what we are going to do is we are going to see how the tau c 
is going to be affected by each of this assuming only one type of scattering phenomenon is present then we will combine this information by superposition. So, let us take up first the ionized impurity scattering as we discussed the ionized impurity scattering results because of change in the direction of motion of a carrier supposing let us say for example this is a ionized donor right. If a hole is moving in this direction as it comes near the impurity it gets repelled and it will move in this direction okay. So, this is the scattering of the hole by the impurity you can similarly have scattering of the electron the electron moves if the electron were moving here it would move in this direction this is for electron and this is a donor instead of N D maybe I will put donor because N D is the concentration okay. So, this is a donor impurity similarly one can draw for an acceptor impurity the picture the scattering. Now this change in direction of this particle is taking place because of the force of attraction or repulsion between the particle and this particular charge. So, obviously the extent of change will depend on how much time the particle spends in the vicinity of this particular charge. Now, if the velocity of the particle is more the velocity with which the particle approaches this charge is more then obviously you expect that it will not bend that much. So, let us say we are talking about holes for simplicity you can always do that for electrons if the velocity is more the path would be something like this it will not bend that much because in the vicinity of this particular charge it will spend less time it is moving much faster. So, this is increasing particle velocity right or speed. Now, as you increase the temperature the random velocity of charge increases this carriers increases. So, therefore, we can say this is the picture for increasing temperature. So, an increase in temperature the scattering will be less because of ionized impurities ok. On the other hand it is also clear from here that the if more the number of ionized impurities greater is the chance of the carriers getting scattered. So, it does not matter whether you have donors or acceptors both donors and acceptors will scatter the particles. So, higher the concentration of impurities higher is the chance of scattering. So, from here we can derive the following information for ionized impurity scattering that is the number of scattering events is more or tau c will put a suffix i to show that we are talking of ionized impurity scattering. So, tau c corresponding to i ionized impurity will fall as the number of ionized donors or acceptors increases ok. So, this we shall represent as total ionized concent impurity concentration N T where it should be understood that this corresponds to ionized impurities ok that is why the plus and minus signs are important. So, as N T increases so tau C i falls when N D plus N A minus increases ok or as a function of temperature if you want to see the scattering is more at lower temperatures right that is what this shows at higher temperature scattering is less which means scattering is more at lower temperatures. So, tau C i will write it little more clearly. So, this is for ionized impurity scattering tau C i falls when total ionized impurity concentration increases or when temperature falls. So, please note fall in tau C i means increased scattering ok. So, more scattering means the time between collisions will be less. Now, one can similarly consider the situation for the phonon or lattice scattering it is very clear that as the temperature increases ok this scattering will be more. So, from for this we can write the tau C i uh, tau C l ok here l stands for lattice or phonon scattering tau C l falls or scattering is more when temperature rises this is for lattice scattering. Now, what about carrier carrier scattering 
for career carrier scattering we must consider scattering of electrons by electrons and scatter of electrons by holes similarly scattering of holes by electrons and scattering of holes by holes we can divide these four events into two types that is scattering of a particle by a particle of the same polarity and scattering of the particle by a particle of the opposite polarity consider scattering of the particle by particle of the same polarity okay if one electron is colliding with another electron it will transfer its momentum and energy to the other electron okay now since the current is not going to be affected because current is the result of the energy and momentum of the entire population so since the energy and momentum is conserved the collisions between particles of the same type does not affect the momentum of the entire population okay and in any direction so which means therefore the directed component of the momentum will not be affected the component which is causing the current so one electron collides with another electron or one hole collides with another hole since it transfers the momentum and the momentum remains in the same direction there is no effect so on the current so current is not affected it doesn't reduce so therefore the carrier carrier scattering does not affect uh, is not important for carriers of the same polarity but scattering by carriers of opposite polarities okay this definitely affects the current and this point we shall consider in the next class in detail as to how scattering of electrons by holes affects the mobility of electrons and how scattering of holes by electrons affects the mobility of holes okay so this particular phenomenon of scattering we shall consider in the next class in detail and then we will also summarize okay or rather put together the picture because of all these three mechanisms of scattering and from there we will get the behavior of the mobility as a function of temperature and as well as as a function of doping